Um, how you doing tonight, brother? I'm good. I'm actually, you know, I'm blessed. All right. First question I wanted to ask you is, um, how did you get into comedy? Like, what motivated you to do comedy? I got motivated when I was in college. So I was in college. Me and my college roommate, uh, Stephen Watts. And I was saying shout out to my boy Stephen Watts. <coughs> we was watching um, Mike Epps, Underrated. Mm -hmm. I was watching that DVD. And it just always, always used to pressure me. Listen, man, you got to do comedy. Because I used to always host, like, all the college fashion shows, all the, you know, talent shows, and, you know, just all the events. Mm -hmm. And it was to a point where the college gravitated to me. But when he told me comedy, I said, mm, comedy, you want me to do something that's not my character. You know, I'm a funny guy, but now you want me to start going in these comedy clubs where it's probably 30 people, 40 people, maybe it's 400 people in Madison Square Garden, and you want me to sell myself to this? So to the point I was kind of scared to do it, but once I became homeless after I left college, I said, yo, you know what, let me just handle the situation at hand. Mm -hmm. And my first show was HBX Studios. I did it with Talent, which is my mentor right now, you know what I'm saying? And when I did that show, it was just something that it really put a burden on me because it made me stop. It made me say, maybe this ain't for me because the club only came up to me and said, don't ever come back to my club. This ain't for you. And it just stopped me. But to this day, I always say, like, my man Stephen Watts always got me to jump that hurdle. Like, when I, I was always the funny guy. I was always the cool guy to be in high school, getting kicked out of classes. We're at a point where I'm with my man Will and my man Will like, yo, you a crazy fool, you know. But it was to a point where I really took it to another level and it's where to a point where I'd be excited where I bring my man Will to a show. He's like, yo, wow, you turned it into jokes. Yeah. Well, it's just a blessing to be where I'm at and to where I started from and where I'm trying to go. Mm -hmm. It's just every day I just thank to be blessed to it's going, it's going, it's going. It's, I'm not booked out every day, right. but I got one of the strongest websites in comedy right now, MarcusBanksComedy.com. So if you can't respect that, it's no reason to talk no more. <laughs> now you said you were in college. What were you? What was your plans like before you got into the comedy, um, the comedy thing? Like well, when I, when I, when I went to college, I went to um, Herkimer County Community College. Okay. So my major was cr criminal justice. Mm -hmm. I seen my uncle as a correction officer, so I said, hey, you know my uncle was making a little money. I seen him transfer from a Hummer to a Benz to a Beamer to, you know, to right. just have an exotic car. So I'm like, yo, you making money mm -hmm. for just sitting there and pressing the red button because inmates are spiking. Maybe I need to go to school and get 60 credits. Right. So me going to school was cool, but when I noticed that, you know, my mom transitioned to try to move to Atlanta and that myself, I never told my mom, like, hey, I owe tuition. I'm going to be homeless. You know, mm. that was the messed up part. Because I couldn't face the fact <laughs> to tell my mom, like, listen, this is going to happen. And my mom kept it real with me. My mom said, hey, listen, I'm about to move to Atlanta. I ain't paying the rent this month. The marshal might be coming. But you can stay as long as you can. Because I know you're going back to school. Meanwhile, I stayed in that crib about a month and a half to the marshals came and said, hey, we got to throw everything on on the curb. Mm -hmm. And that was it. I started sleeping on the 205 train. So it's like, my plan was to be a correction officer. I'll tell you straight to your face. <laughs> I was in the streets. Mm -hmm. I, I dipped out the streets. I done did some time. A, a lot of people got to respect what I've done. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's to a point where I done went to the guy you hated to the guy you loved. I done did a toy drive. I done gave back thousands of dollars to my local, local boys and girls club. And we talking about a dude that's still living with his mom trying to make his community better. I could have been got my own car. I could have been got my own crib. I could have been living comfortable. But at the same time, I like to see my community feel special before I feel special. Because when I eat, we all going to eat. Plain and simple. Right. Right. You were talking.